What's up guys? I am back with our buddy Louise. You've been jacking him in some shallow water. And so today I just thought it'd be fun to just kind of get a different viewpoint on it. So today we're going to kind of talk about your shallow water approach to fishing this time of the year. What's been working for you? I know you've got some mods on some of these. So as long as you don't mind sharing it with, uh, with the world. Good. Yeah. All right. That's well, okay. if you want to jump in, let's do it guys. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just wanna elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, a Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by Louise, High Country Outdoors on Instagram, and of course, our buddy CJ. What's up, CJ? How's it going, man? It's going well. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited. digging the uh, little porn stash you got oh, yeah. going on. Was that for me or Louise? Well, I was trying to catch up with Louise. <laughs> I, I mean, see. look at that. Nice. Little grizzle here. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I don't have a ponytail. You should bring that back too. Mm. Yeah, Maybe. well, I think, think I'm the it. only one that has a chance now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to take over the ponytail <laughs> zone of the store. What's up, guys? We are talking about shallow cover fishing. You've been catching some really nice ones. Uh, we're kind of in that end of summer phase right now, and I thought this would be a fun episode. Just, I'm just gonna pick your brain. I'm just going to talk to you about what you've been doing. I love talking to different people that I don't fish with a lot because the mentality is always slightly different and I always kind of pick up some little tidbits. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to kind of pick your brain. We'll share what you've been doing. Now, I should preface, right, that you're always fishing from a kayak, which is going to be insightful for a lot of our community because so many people are kayak fishing. Do you think you could have the same approach from a bass boat or from shore or from a different vessel? Uh, I mean, for the most part, uh, yeah, for sure. But um, just certain times I'm right on top of the cover I'm fishing, which I, you know you can only do in a kayak probably. So. Yeah, it's definitely an uh, advantage, yeah. right? Get to some super skinny stuff and mm -hmm. go through. All right, well, let's talk about, you know, you, you pull up to, uh, you know, a lake or a river system that you're in. How are you breaking down this kind of heavy cover fishing what's what's your approach here uh so for sure like i i'm always liking to you know have a real good time and have a better way to do that than you know catch them on the frog right so uh i will try to <laughs> force feed them the frog probably a little longer than i should you know but it's all right um yeah right it's know. the funnest way to catch them don't yeah, you think? hard to beat you know yeah. so um yeah i'm starting off with that and then i'm usually following it up with uh like a backlight or some so kind of soft plastic. plastic. Yeah. Okay. When I asked you, I said, hey, I'll go grab the frogs so we can talk about this. Which frogs do you want me to grab, right? So normally when I'm throwing, like when there's a frog bite, I know I have a box of like 42 different types of frogs. And I have my favorites, right? I'm gonna throw on Buster K or my Big Gabber or whatever, right? And so I was expecting you to give me two or three frogs to go and you go, oh, it's Peace Spintail. That's it? Yeah. Go, yeah, oh, it's Peace Spintail. So talk to me about, well, let me take one out so it's, oh, Party pal. I haven't even drank yet. <laughs> okay, here, here's one out of the package. Talk to me about the OSP spintail. This is a frog that isn't spoken about a lot. It's not necessarily a new frog to the market. Definitely a under the radar sleeper mm -hmm. frog. So talk to me about this. What is it about this that you love? Uh, so first thing, like right off the bat, like front to end, we'll just start there. It's got this uh, welded ring. That thing's pretty bitchin'. It's just allows you to walk so good. Um, even someone that's pretty new to it can probably pick it up and walk it fairly easily. Speaking about that, not to interrupt you, do you think it's harder to walk a frog from a kayak than it is from a full-size boat? So yeah, for sure. Like that's another reason why I also go with this guy is because 
um, I can do a straight retrieve with it. So a little blade in the back. Um, there'll be some times where all they want to do is eat it on a straight retrieve. Uh, there'll be some times where in the morning they want it on straight retrieve and in the afternoon they want it, you know, kind of walking or whatever. And that's pretty much why I go with this frog is because um, like my second most or second bait I'd be the most confident with would probably be like a buzz bait uh, as far as top water goes. And this almost is, is a buzz bait. Um, on that straight retrieve, you get a little subtle disturbance. You know, it's not really plopping, just like a boop boop, you know. And that calls them up, you know, that, that'll get that reaction. And like I said, sometimes they want one, sometimes they want the other, and sometimes they just don't care. And that's what's really great about this one is I'm able to find find it you know, with this one bait, you know, I'm not having to tie on a, a plopper or like a buzz bait or, uh, you the know, one frog bait. is doing all these different things gives. And again, getting back to you're from a kayak, right? So space is limited, right? Not that, you know, not that 42 frog is going to take up a whole lot of space, but if you can conserve space and you can accomplish multiple things with one bait, one rod better. Yeah, right. For sure. I mean, I would consider it doing, doing everything a frog should, right? You know, you got a straight retrieve, a walk, and a little bit of a pop too, so. Okay, so what type of cover are you looking for this time of the year? Are you putting this, are you looking for like matted vegetation, surface type cover? Are you looking for wood or rock or toolies or everything? What, uh, what are you yeah, after? Yeah, it just depends where I'm at, right? Okay. Um, fish a lot like the river and uh, pieces of, that would be, you know, okay. connected to it. Uh, Which means so, what for everybody that doesn't know? Like a quarry what? or um, just like a, a pool that just got stranded, you know, just on its own. Okay. So, and like what that. type of cover are you finding? At uh, these like a lot of lay down, so like sticks and trees. And um, there's some vegetation in some of those spots. You know, but like mostly rivers, wood. But yeah, a lot more wood. And okay. Stuff. Uh, okay. Overhang for sure. Like you know, trees and, and limbs and whatnot. So. Okay, and then when you go up to the higher country, is it does it kind of transition to mostly aquatic vegetation? Yeah, it's more, more grass, more and, and grass and grass. Okay, like so really it's it's kind of whatever. Yeah, Whatever's in front of you, you're accomplishing the same with the with this frog. So that's this is your frog of choice either way. Yeah, for sure. And okay. that's actually like why uh, Griff actually suggested this frog to me because he was saying it was, goes over that real thick matted stuff really well, which it does, but you know, I just found out I like it for everything. So okay, <laughs> not easy, easy, yet, easy right? enough. Yeah. Now, are you are you throwing the frog like first thing in the morning? What's dictating you starting with a frog instead of maybe starting with a soft plastic? Mm. Or is it just about this fun thing that you keep talking about? Yeah, I mean, I typically would start with something like this. If not this, then you know, some kind of a top water in the morning. Okay. Just to uh, take advantage of that opportunity okay. if it's there, you know. So. But, okay. Um, and then let's say you've gone through the morning and I mean, obviously if they're going to eat the frog all day, you're just going to throw the frog all day. Yeah. But right. not when at put some it point, do you, something has to go through your head that makes you put it down and pick up something else. Yeah. Right. So what, what is that something? So as the day warms up, they might be just striking at it, like really lethargic, you know, just kind of, you'll see, you know, on a straight retrieve or whatever, you'll just see like a little swirl behind it. So that tells me that they're there, but they might not have been, you know, convinced or whatever, you know, you know, they just need that little something else to get them to eat. And uh, for sure, like my number one follow-up bait is like a backlight of some sort. Okay. So, so let's, let's jump to that. Give me, yeah. give me the frogs. No more frogs for you. Frog part of the day is over. Yeah. All right. So this is going to be fun because we we talk about back glides a lot and I know Griff loves throwing a back glide. This isn't something that I throw that much. So I'm happy that this is a bait that gives you a lot of confidence. So talk to me about a back glide and why. Well, first talk to me about what a back glide does versus just like a normal soft plastic. You get the, the life like, you know, fall and everything that you would get on like a weightless plastic, but you're able to just get it way farther into cover than like even pretty much anything else because like sometimes there's there's overhang so you can't just cast it beyond and get it to the back like that so that you got to skip it or or glide it so that's probably the next best way that besides skipping you know to get something all the way back into where you need it to be one of these so when we're talking about a back glide bait 
right? We're talking about something that's kind of weighted uh, deeper into the back end. Mm -hmm. Almost always the backlight base. So you have an OSP dual light gill here. You've got uh, the depths uh, bull slide, mm -hmm. right? These are your two favorites? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you can rig these in a normal fashion, right? So you could take, like I could take this out and I could rig this the way you would normally rig it, right? So the hook's gonna come through here, right? It's gonna, it's gonna basically look like this in the bait and your line's going out like this. And you basically have this like flat kind of bluegill thing that's gonna kind of just like fall. But if you rig it backwards, right? So you go in from the backside to the front, then you have this weighted piece here that's allowing it to glide away from you mm -hmm. in essence, right? So if you guys are new to backlights, that's what we're talking about. So if Luis is a tree, right? And I throw to him with a Senko, for instance, and I land it right here, well, the Senko is just gonna kind of fall down or even kind of away from the tree because my line is kind of pulling it away, right? So the fish are back here, but I can't get back there because I can only cast to here and now it's going. But if you throw a backlight in there and it lands, it's fighting to go back underneath that cover or dock or whatever it is. That's what we're referring to. I'll let you, let you love that smell. Yeah, yeah, that was pee. Mm, it's the best. Mm, so good. Hard to beat that scent. <laughs> yeah, don't lie, smell. So, it's one of those things that only fishermen will like. No, 100%, <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so funny when the FedEx guys come in and all they smell is OSP. <laughs> right, yeah, or you can tell when like a non-fisherman comes in, they're like, what is this store? Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you guys get? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scent of OSP hits them. <laughs> These are my two favorites. Uh, this one, the Doe Live, it's not as heavy. So what I like about this one is, you know, if they're, if you want it to suspend a lot more, you can just throw it like, like basically straight out like this. Um, but you can add a little nail to it to get it to come down faster. Or uh, the position of the nail also will like make it come down first, or just add the weight and make it come out further. So uh, if I'm trying to get it to dive more down into, in, you know, poking into s some cover like that, then I'm gonna move the weight towards the tip. Uh, if I need it to glide longer, then I'm gonna just have it like, you know, almost to the middle. Okay. Um, and still you're a little just, it's just by pushing it in farther? That's all you're doing? Uh, or are you actually sticking no, I'm it actually from the bottom? No, I'm actually moving it. Uh, so I have, like, let's say for the one a little more down, I'd yep. probably do like one ridge back. And okay. uh, like if I'm trying to just, you know, extend the glide would give it some weight yep. then probably like two or three. Okay, so you're actually in, inserting it more in two the or center three of back. The I yeah. see. Okay. Cool. Um, so I like the bull slide a lot, but this guy is pretty heavy. So uh, it's nice. Like if I know I'm already fishing deep, I can just put this on and it's going to go down there real quick. But if it's like, I don't really know where I'm getting bit or if it's closer to the surface that I'm getting bit, I'm definitely going to go with this guy here because it's just going to hang a lot more. Okay. Um, and then those little appendages get kicking. Uh, that's something like, not, not really any of the other gliding baits have. They have like... Yeah, most of them are more of just like a smooth. Yeah, they got like a, right? like a tube appendage of some sort or like, you yep. know, hairs or something like that, but not really like a, a flapping one. So okay. I kind of like that vibration that this gives too. So. Okay. All right, what about color? Is that making a difference for you? Uh, did you grab these two packs just randomly? Uh, normally I just go with like a shad. This one I keep okay. it simple, right? Um, this color is my favorite color. Uh, pretty much throwing this one like eight out of 10 times. Okay. Uh, or some kind of like a white or like that champagne pearl-ish. Okay, and that's something that's different too than I would say majority of people are throwing for soft plastic. I would say the majority of times, CD, when you're throwing soft plastic, are you usually starting with a darker color, like a green pumpkin or a black blue or something like that? Or are you usually starting with a lighter color? Depends on the forage, right? Okay. Like if you're fishing how Luis is fishing, I would assume there's a lot of bluegill around, so you might want to throw something like a green pumpkin. But if you know the bait fish, like the shad or shallow, you're going with the shad color. Cool. Okay. Talk to me about this Louise mod. So I've thrown this on Instagram a couple times and and I know you've been catching a ton of fish on it. Some people have come in, they've made this mod. Yeah. So talk talk us through the Louise mod and and why you're doing it and what you are doing. Uh, so same thing like I was saying, you know, sometimes I want it to just be be gliding for as long as possible, right? Um, I've been adding like this little blade kit we sell. It's a uh, slide weight by decoy. Um, so you can go with different style blades. Uh, I've been mostly just going with the willow. 
Um, so I've just been getting that of the flashy swimmer kit. Um, so you get the weight that goes on the hook and then the flashy swimmer mm -hmm. blade and that'll yeah. that'll attach to the weight. Yeah, okay. I was just starting with this because the hook, you know, is going to change by uh, bait, right? Okay. So this, okay. this is what I'm going with for that, that four inch kind of flat bait. Okay. Um, the screw in is the better choice for this. Uh, you're going to get tired of <laughs> re-threading your, your bait and, and all that uh, yeah. and re-tying. So um, for sure the screw in is what you want to go with with this style. Um, and that weight is just letting me, you know, make a little bit longer of a cast and kind of just getting it down fat, like a little faster, but the blade is slowing it down at the same time. So it's getting that flash. So in essence, you've got that bait that's falling and gliding. And then that blade is down there just kind of janky almost. Yeah, it's, it's not so like strange. a true weird spin. It's just kind of like doing whatever it does, but. There that, seems to be something to it. Oh, they, they, like, that really catches their attention. And there's been times where I'll feel like I get bit and I'll pull it up and the fish will actually have just have followed it because of the blade behind it, which that hasn't happened to me with just throwing like a straight back glide. That's only something that's happened to me since I've added that blade to it. And I've actually caught fish bringing it up, seeing that they're behind it and I'll kill it, let it fall again and I'll pick it up. Interesting. So, so it's a, a super natural, it. most of the time when you see a fish and you go, oh shit, and you kill it, I mean, you're toast, yeah. right? I mean, we think about a hard bait or a swim bait or any normal thing, done. But this is one of those few baits that gives you the opportunity to actually just put it back in their face and it, it has such a, a lifelike natural movement. Yeah, I think it's the combination of the, like the soft plastic, the gliding, and you got the little bit of the flash too, so I mean, if they don't like one, they probably like the other, so. Yeah, so when you're using this, when you're using this type of uh, bait, are you using a traditional kind of like pitching type rod? So heavier line uh, and? I like a spinning setup, like, okay. like a medium heavy, uh, like seven, seven foot about. Okay. Six, 11. You are know, you going close. braid to leader? Uh, braid to leader, it? yeah, okay. and pretty light line. Um, probably should go up a little bit, but I'd, really feel like I get way more bites uh, with the eight pound. Um, not that I break off often, but for sure in some of that thick cover, I have gotten hung up and lost a couple fish, but I feel like the amount of bites that I'm getting from fishing with that lighter line yeah. is more beneficial to me than going up a little bit. So this is almost like a, a power and then finesse type thing. And so I, I was thinking we were coming talking power, power, but you're kind of power fishing through with the frog you're kind of finesse fishing in the back line, mm. which is kind of the opposite of what anybody else is, well, not anybody else, but what most people would, or what I would think of, every time I back glide is 20 pound, yeah. right? <laughs> and it's pitch it to that tree and see how far back there I can get it, right? I haven't even thought about it from a standpoint, but I would imagine the spinning rod is gonna allow you more movement. Yeah, so the, just the ability to give yourself all that line at the beginning of your cast is is gonna let that bait get the maximum distance into whatever you're trying to throw it into. Yeah, so. it's smart. I when I first started tournament fishing, my team fishing partner Phil, we like one of the first tournaments we ever fished was a, a flipping tournament at Alamo, right? And they're smoking a senko, right? Now all my rods have got you know 22 pound, 25 pound, right? And he pulls out the spinning rod. I'm like, what the fuck's this guy doing? And he's flipping a senko with a spinning rod. And it was just so crazy to me that anybody would actually do this. And he was catching fish. I mean, there's literally a hundred boats around us in this one little area. And we could just go behind people all day. And he'd catch fish that nobody else could catch because of how the bait falls. On a, on the a spinning rod, you can just open the spool and give it slack. And it falls so much more naturally than on a casting rod where it has all that line drag, right? So this makes perfect sense. I just had no idea that's how you were throwing it. So now I'm even more intrigued. Yeah, so I mean like a lot of guys like to watch their line and stuff. So that's kind of what I'm doing too. Um, and I'm fishing a little deeper. Uh, that's, I'm focusing more on like watching my line because I'll see, you know, the bait go down and then the line will veer off to one side all of a sudden. And that's how I know I'm hooked up or how to fight or something, so. Okay, no reason you can't do this on heavier line as well, but it's interesting to hear your take and see how you're doing it out there and you've been having a lot of success with it so no reason we shouldn't try it your way and yeah. see 
If you're crazy or not crazy, <laughs> we'll let you know, Louise. We'll get back to you. Yeah. Let's, hey, CJ, let's go flipping with some eight town. Yeah, we're here to have fun, not catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> All right, dude, I appreciate you sharing your insight and walking us through this stuff. If you guys have any questions for Louise, uh, drop it down below, and we will definitely get some answers for you guys. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Keep sticking them, keep catching them. Till next time, guys, thank you for giving us some uh, time and watching our videos. Thank you for the support and the business. We will see you on the next one. See ya.